Hello YouTube. Um, it's been a while since I've made a video, uh, several months actually, just because uh, I had a lot of things going on in my life and uh, finally had some time where things weren't going on in my life, so I decided to uh, take the opportunity to make another video. So the subject for this video is this cute old walking stick, which I picked up at my local flea market uh, about two weeks ago and uh, it was interesting enough for me to decide that you know I'll add it to my collection um, it'll be a nice interesting little talking piece and uh, yeah I will be doing that talking now so uh, I picked this up from a friend of mine at the local flea market and uh, it was in a pretty battered, worn out condition uh, when I got it. So, yeah, I will walk you through it. So, this stick is made of bamboo. Uh, as you can probably tell from how bent and knotted it is. Um, and it has a lovely solid silver handle. Um, so when I bought this stick, it was in very bad repair. The original uh, cap at the top had been completely broken off. It was all dented and cracked and everything. And uh, my friend had tried to repair it and it hadn't been successful. Uh, the whole top of the cane just broke right off. Uh, it was impossible to repair. It was so damaged. Uh, so as a result, I got it really, really cheap. Uh, just because of the, the sheer condition it was in. It was basically unusable. Um, but yeah, I will talk you through it. So, like I said, the top is silver. And this cane was likely made in China or somewhere in, somewhere in Asia, Southeast Asia. China, Hong Kong, Singapore, Dutch East Indies, Malaya, somewhere around there. Um... Around the late 1800s, early 1900s. And uh, what really attracted me to it was all these little oriental figures on the beautiful silver uh, handle collar, which is what you see here. So, I'll just give you a quick tour of it, just so you can see. Get the light just right. So we've got little, got the little uh, Chinese house with the uh, eaves. We've got the figures uh, dressed in traditional Chinese robes with the fans and the and the uh, and the bamboo trees. Um, really cute little uh, scene. And you've got the uh, you've got the little bridge here as well going over the stream. Uh, it's really, really detailed. And uh, that was what really attracted to, attracted me to it, was, the, uh, was the, the whole oriental theme around the handle. I mean, most walking sticks you see don't have stuff like this. They have, um, they're engraved with animal heads or they've got the derby handles or the crook J handles um, or they're silver or they're ivory and they're usually very, very simply decorated. Um, this was nothing like that. So, you know, I wanted something that was different and unique. And I thought, you know, this is, this certainly fits the bill. So I bought it. And uh, so like I said, when I bought it, the handle was completely broken off. This was all gone. And you could tell just from looking at it that there was no additional like T-bar or anything else that went across the top. It was just a flat top. So when I got home, I was rummaging around in my box of scrap silver and I found a very appropriate um, cap to put on top of the walking stick. This is just a broken sterling silver cufflink. Uh, the whole the whole thing is silver. All this all this stuff is uh, solid sterling silver. And so uh, basically what I did was I filled up the interior because this is, this is all hollow inside or at least the top mm, half an inch is all hollow. And so I filled it all up with, 
epoxy to give it some weight, to give it some strength. And then I just stuck this on, like I said, this is the sterling silver um, cufflink cap. So that just goes on top like that. Uh, I, and I set it down so that it's uh, got a nice little overhang all the way around, nice and even. And yeah, and then all I did was just polish it, clean it up. Um, the only other repair I did was this here. This was a crack. Well, not, not a crack, it was a, um, a chip. So I took some more silver and uh, filled in the gap there so it's nice and even. I mean, you can barely see it. If you didn't know it was there, it would just look like any other dent. I mean, th this thing is covered with dents. I mean, look, 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 look at all these. Um, so yeah, it blends in nicely and uh, it fills out the empty spots. Um, so I said this thing is about late 1800s and that's because of the length of this at the other end. This is the original brass and uh, iron or steel ferrule on the bottom. Uh, so basically this is just slipped on, hammered on and then it's just held in with a couple of nails. Um, so basically when, um, when people really started carrying walking sticks as walking aids, as fashion accessories, you know, around the 1600s, 1700s, um, the roads were really, really awful. I mean, there was no, there was no such thing as paved roads. So if you went out for a walk, um, you could be slogging through mud, you could be going through potholes, puddles, all that kind of stuff. Uh, which is one of the reasons why you carried a walking stick, because the, the roads were just so unbearable to walk on. You needed something to keep your balance, otherwise you'd just trip over, um, because the roads were just so bad. There was no, you know, cobblestones, no no paving stones, no certainly no uh, bitumen asphalt, nothing like that. So you would carry a walking stick to help you walk. And because the roads were so bad, the sticks would sink into the mud and everything, and to stop the wood from rotting from the rain, water, snow, damp, mud, all that kind of stuff. Um, the ferrules on the sticks, which is this thing here, the metal cap, the ferrules used to be very, very long. There would be, oh geez, you know, three, four, five, six inches, eight inches long, nine inches long, and they would cover most of the stick all the way up to, you know, say here. And the whole point to that was to protect the wood and to, and, and also to reduce the wear on the stick. But um, as time went by, as people started paving roads, started putting in, putting in paving stones, cobblestones, uh, stuff like that, um, the need to protect so much of the stick um, started to uh, reduce. And so as a result, the ferrules got shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until, uh, you know, some of these sticks, they just have a tiny little cap on the end, just like, you know, just like this. And so... Uh, one way to date walking sticks is to, if you if they still have the original ferrule, is just to measure the ferrule. Um, something which is really, really long, so like, you know, four, five, six or more inches, is going to be a much older walking stick. Uh, early 1800s, 1700s, something like this, which is a lot shorter. I mean, this is about, this whole thing is about an inch and a half, I think. And so this would be... Mm, mid to late Victorian. Um, I, I don't think it's, um, and I don't think it's into the twentieth century by any significant length. I think this is probably mid to late nineteenth century. Twentieth um, century is a lot smaller. Again, it goes all the way up to here. Uh, so yeah, this is a nice, um, you know, colonial era walking stick, probably made in China or made in Southeast Asia, either for the local markets or made as an export piece to be sold to the uh, Western expats or the uh, the colonials um, or to, uh, you know, colonial officials, sorry, uh, to be taken back to England, France, the Netherlands, something like that, uh, just as a nice little um, keepsake, little souvenir. So yeah, this is uh, this is the whole thing. So just like that, and down again. The whole thing is just under uh, three feet long. This whole thing from the top here down to the 
ferrule at the bottom is 35 inches. So, you know, it's a nice medium sized antique walking stick. It's in good condition. Uh, you know, it's something you can very well use and carry today. Uh, because the top is nice and flat, it's very comfortable to hold in your hand. Um, so all I do is like, if I hold this is, I'll grip it like this, two fingers on the side, wrap it around the top, like so. And it just hangs there very comfortably while you hold it, while you walk with it. Uh, if you're carrying it around, anything like that, it's a nice firm grip. And of course the rim around the edge makes it very easy just to hang there like that. So yeah, there we are. Um, so yeah, uh, late 19th century um, silver topped walking stick, uh, probably made in Asia, Southeast Asia, uh, as an export piece. Um, one way that you do know that is the fact that this silver collar is not hallmarked. Um, Chinese silversmiths would not have bothered hallmarking something as small as this. Um, Asian silver and gold in those days wasn't really hallmarked at all, really. Um, so they wouldn't have, especially something this small, you know, a walking stick handle. You know, what's the point? It's, you know, it's a couple of ounces of silver at best. So they, they, they wouldn't have bothered stamping marks on something like this but um it has been tested and it is silver and it is a lovely lovely uh antique walking stick and a piece of uh piece of history anyway thank you for watching and uh hope to put up more videos very soon uh i've got a lot more stuff to talk about and a lot more stuff to show you thank you very much for watching if you've got any questions or comments then leave them in the uh, comments section down below thank you very much